He's a Navy enlisted man whose lot has been cast with the Marines. They often call him Doc. It's a term of respect for the man who wears their uniform and goes where they go. In combat, all men know his title. It's the battlefield call for help, a cry for life itself. Corman. The prompt and selfless response of the Navy's hospital corpsman or the Army's medic to a call for help is a tradition rooted in our own country's struggle for existence. It's a tradition reaffirmed in countless acts of valor, of heroism under fire. But the corpsman has never considered himself a miracle man. He knows his limitations. He knows that even raw courage on his part is not always enough to save the life of another human being. He knows that he is only the first link in the chain of survival, a chain of elaborate, efficient, and increasingly swift medical services that stretches all the way from the battlefront to great medical centers in the United States itself. The Navy's medical men say the fabulous helicopter is a vital factor in giving battle-wounded men a better chance for survival. In World War I, the fatality rate among men wounded on the battlefield was 5.5%. During World War II, it dropped to 3.3%. In Korea, where the choppers were first used for medical evacuation, it was 2.7%. Today, in Vietnam, where skilled help is brief minutes, not long hours from the front line, the toll is less than 2%. For the Marines in combat, though, the corpsman who travels with them is the immediate symbol of survival. There are other threats to life than bombs and bullets on the battlefields of Vietnam. Here, the mere act of taking a drink of unpurified water is enough to start an epidemic of dysentery. In the endless paddy fields and the elephant grass, men on the move face a constant danger of contact with leeches, poisonous snakes, the carriers of dengue, and a virulent strain of malaria. All day, every day, in the fetid water can destroy even the most sturdy boot. And in a big operation such as Harvest Moon, immersion foot is a vexing problem for the Marines and the corpsmen. And always in Vietnam, there are the people. In the very heart of battle, or along jungle trails, or in nearly deserted villages. The corpsman is helping breach the barriers of time, of language, and of distrust. Barriers which President Johnson has said must be swept away if we're going to win the hearts and minds of the people and help the Republic of Vietnam achieve ultimate victory. By now, the people of the countryside have come to know the corpsman and to trust him. For them, the word is boxy, the Vietnamese name for doctor. And the word goes out as if by magic, the boxy is here, wherever the corpsman sets down his bag of medical gear. He treats all who come to him, knowing that some must be the enemy in this most paradoxical of wars. But knowing, too, there is no limit to his consciously accepted responsibility of responding promptly to a plea for help. For this wounded Marine and a companion, the call for help was raised along the firing line near Hill 22 by members of Lima Company 3rd Regiment. Within seconds, the message was relayed by radio to medevac helicopters standing on alert at Da Nang East, 20 miles away. For the men of medevac and their helicopters, the formula of success is built around persistence and courage. They travel in pairs, the slick, or medical ship, descending for the pickup, while the gunship offers air-to-ground covering fire with rockets and machine guns during those precarious moments when the litter bearers must carry the wounded into the open. Corporal Dave Baggett of Portland, Oregon. A man with a leg wound. A man in pain. Let me have your arm. Okay. Relax, boy, you can here. Put it a little bit. Lay down, lay down. 
Two cakes, buddy. That's what the pain is now. You're all right. Oh, my God. In less than seven minutes after the pickup, Medivac has brought Dave Baggett to touch down at C Company of the 3rd Medical Battalion, the one the Marines call Charlie Med. You got to lift it up. Ah. From the looks of it, either in here or in the ah. You hold your next step. Oh, uh, yeah. What's this? Uh, 110 over 64. So your blood pressure looks pretty good. Uh, type of cross matching for four, please. Gee, Merry Christmas. It's a big one, isn't it? Yeah. Is there a round one I don't know, son. We'll have to get the x-ray on it and check. The quick decision to x-ray was made by Lieutenant Commander Richard Escajeda, Chief Surgeon and Commanding Officer of Charlie Meth. Well, the results of the x-ray show, uh, considerable damage to the femur. As I pointed out, this is the large bone in the thigh, and uh, it's going to uh, require uh, open fixation of that fracture. The surgery will be performed by Lieutenant Commander F.K. Mole, an orthopedic surgeon assisted by Lieutenant Commander Escajeda. Okay, open and close your fist for me now, son. Dave, we're going to sit you up for about uh, two minutes while he uh, puts this medicine in your back. It will take the pain away almost immediately. Dave, what do you think about being able to go home now? Oh, I do. You sit at night and watch and just think about the things when you're going to get home. Things you're going to do. Well, pretty soon you'll be there. Yeah. Things have certainly worked out. You've got no more pain in your leg. And it's just a matter now that you may feel some movement, but no more pain. I ain't going to worry about it. So. Okay, Dave, just drop back in my arms. Well, we'll have you sleepy in a minute. But we'll just open it and you clean out all the, any of the dead muscle from the bullet wound. And then uh, if the artery isn't broken, we'll just put him in a cast, this up to his uh, chest, and uh, send him out. First, I'll uh, trim the damaged tissue from the bullet as it went through the front of the leg or the thigh. And uh, then we'll open it up to see where the vessel is and what, how much is ruined, if it is. And here's your wound here. I think the artery's all right. There's, there's a big piece, piece, piece of the bullet. There she comes. Piece of the bullet. Can you see it? Okay. This part of the procedure is almost at an end. You'll have a cast from here to here, from here all the way down enables them to put on a body spike of wrapping all the way around them, you see? Another web rope, please. In Ward 1, the recovery area, Corporal Baggett was given a physical checkup and presented with his Purple Heart, a presentation accompanied by these words. Corporal David Baggett, it's my privilege and honor to present you with this Purple Heart. It is the oldest, the prettiest decoration that we have in the military. It symbolizes the appreciation and the gratitude of the American people for the fact that you have been wounded in the service of your country. For this reason, you should always wear it proudly. Good luck to you. Thank you very much, sir. Then, less than a half a day after his ordeal on the operating table, Corman moved Dave Baggett out to a waiting helicopter. At Da Nang, there's just time for the transfer to one of the Air Force hospital planes that makes the daily shuttle from various air bases in Vietnam to Clark Field in the Philippines. It's this small group, plus the pilots and crewmen of the Military Airlift Command, that form another vital and integral link in the chain of survival bridging the gap between battlefield surgery in Vietnam and eventual treatment in the world's finest medical centers. 
For Dave Baggett, the stay at Clark Hospital will be a brief one. There'll be time enough for a thorough physical, a good meal, the removal of the upper portion of the cast from his chest. and the most important telephone call he's ever made in his life. The one home. By morning, he's on his way again. His next stop, Travis Air Force Base near San Francisco, California. As the big jet hospital plane nears the Pacific coast, Dave's parents, who have flown in from Portland, are waiting anxiously at the Travis Hospital. There's a brief and joyous reunion before a night's rest and the final leg of the journey to Bremerton Naval Hospital in the state of Washington. What about Dave Baggett's future? Here are the words of the man who helped save his life, Lieutenant Commander Escajeda. I would venture to say that he may be on his feet well, uh, within uh, a year, I would say more like a half a year. With his youth and uh, with the powers of recuperation, plus uh, the excellent surgery, I would say that uh, he has every chance of having a completely normal existence once he's healed. And so Dave Baggett's call for help was heard and answered. And as long as there are men in combat gear fighting for the freedom and independence of the people of Vietnam, there will be men with medical equipment, civilian as well as military, from all the nations joining in the common fight, ready to respond to the call for help that the Marines know as Corman.